<laughs> I'm going to quickly I'm going to quickly go into there, there are so many questions a lot of people have been asking me for some time with regards to having access to the public funds thank you madam, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am, thank you, thank you you know, a lot of people have been asking me questions which they want to have access I love you too. Thank you. And, um, you know, to public funds. But one thing you will understand about my situation is that if I don't have concrete answer to a problem, a scenario as a lawyer, I don't like to come to public to demean my status. You know, I have to be certain, 110% certain, you know, 110% certain that this is this is what I'm saying is the truth and nothing but the truth. And, you know, if I don't have that answer to the questions that the public are asking and for me to respond, I tell them that I don't know about it and I don't know it. And I, and I mean it. But I can categorically, confidently say to you that I have an answer to the problems. At, on ground, especially to the problem of having access to recourse to public funds. A lot of people want to have access to co uh, public funds due to the uh, fact that they have lost their job under COVID-19, which is coronavirus uh, pandemic situation. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you on board to my platform. Before I start putting information to the public domain, I don't want people to be selfish anymore, especially when I'm talking serious matter. I don't want you to be selfish anymore. I want you to be a respectant and be a keeper to your other fellows that on your platform. Share this program one one time on your platform. Please, before I give you the information requires, can you share the program? Can you share it on your platform? And let other people that need it as well, that lost their job, that needed government aid, let them have this information as well. If I am not selfish to disseminate into the public, then why would you be selfish, you know, to keep it to yourself as you hear it from here and not put it on your platform? So please, um, I, am, I am not selfish to keep the information and I would not want you to be selfish in keeping the information as well. So I'd like you to disseminate into the public arena and that's the way I want us to go. Please disseminate information into the public arena. So have it there, you know, have the information, put it on your platform. So as I'm disseminating it, please also pass it on. Let's continuously pass it on. A lot of people are distressed. A lot of people are depressed and distressed because they lost their job and they cannot have access to public funds because they have limited leave to remain. Uh, I am coming to put out the information to the public arena. So I want you to share it as well. So before I start giving you the status and the things that you required, can you share the program to your timeline? The more we share it, the more we assist others, the more we help them. You understand? So share it. Share it. I was on my father's, uh, one of my father in the Lord uh, platform last night. He said share it so that people who come in late, later on can pick it up. That is how to save souls. That is how to help people. That is how to give information sometimes when it's genuine. When information is genuine, when it's authentic, it is better to share it to the public arena. And let people have it as well. Don't be selfish of it by keeping it to yourself. It's not really good. I don't like people to be selfish of something that needs, needed sharing. You know, there are certain things that you cannot share with people, but there are certain things you can share with people. I'm sharing my knowledge, my, my, my brain. So please share your platform with people as well. Because if I share my, my brain, my knowledge, 
then share your platform uh, share your platform with others so that they can take the, they can take the opportunity to know that there is an assistant for them there's a, there's a, there, there's a, um, an arena for them to go through to you know to get what they wanted so yes um there are several emails and and whatsapp messages that have been flying around asking questions they wanted me to respond with regards to those who have who have uh, conditions you know uh they have conditions at the back of their biometric card and basically thank you and basically they want to know what to do and some have lost their jobs and you can attest to it of course they have lost their job now before i go into the real information that you are seeking one let me first of all give, give out a warning timing you know a time warning belt time warning belt is that if you're self-employed if you're self-employed if you're self-employed and you want to claim uh money from the government money from goft govt yeah you want to claim money from the govt you're going to struggle a little bit you're going to struggle if you have been possibly claiming low income yeah low income or making losses so if you have been claiming low income for example some people make good money and they decided to just tell lies and say okay i am going to just declare 200 pounds or 2000 pounds or 3000 4000 pounds fine you can continuously declaring that as long as you don't come for help from the government to rescue you in this covid period then you can continuously do that if it pays you if it's good for you the day you will not be able to declare it anymore you are going to see the repercussion so people are now struggling to get access to claim money from the government and and genuinely the business they are they have closed down their business because not everybody have that luck to work from home like me not everybody so i won't i won't say too much on that not everybody have that opportunity to work from home and still continuously even though it will not as be as high before but i am i have I've, i haven't stopped working so i don't have any reason not to pay my taxes all the time because i haven't stopped working it might not as be as high but i cannot complain so if you have claimed losses or claim low income that is a big deal for you to rethink your your accountants should be advising you correctly on way forward in this in this scenario and for future purposes your accountant should be advising you correctly so we need to be wary of that because if your accountant is not giving you that optimum advice that you needed mm -hmm. to enhance your ability to clock back from the government from this period of COVID-19 then there's a problem somewhere you see that accountant is not giving you the good advice or you are not listening you are dictating to your accountant and sometimes it's a big problem if you're dictating to professionals you have gone to take advice you should be listening to a professional that you have gone to for advice it's like going to a medical doctor for, for medical advice and you are telling the medical doctor what to tell you if you think you have known it already why going to that doctor and the same thing goes to those who go to prophets for prayers they they tell prophets their story already so of course in between there can be a problem Instead of you telling them what you want them to know, you don't say anything and let God speak through them genuinely. The same thing in the case of a lawyer, an accountant, or a medical doctor. Don't give scenario. Once you have given them the situation, let your accountant advise you the way forward. How much you have to declare and how much you have to put under expenses. If you don't do that, this period is the period that will expose you and it can cost you if you, and if care is not taken, you might end you you might end up begging people for food and go and queue and fighting for food. After all, you have worked enough, you have worked harder enough to get money. So why should you be begging for food? But because you have not been upright and not been honest, it's an area of issue. That is that about that. When it comes to declaring and claiming back from the HM revenue and customs, that is for that side. Now yes yes it is i've answered that question yes i just said yes now so yes it is it's still on 
Now, in terms of people that wanted to claim, uh, what is it called? Want to claim, um, want to have access to public funds. That is NRPF, no recourse to public funds. And you want to have access to public funds. There are so many things that you have to be wary of. It is not automatic. If your husband is working and any 30, 40,000, listen, if your husband is a British citizen, and it's any 40 to 50,000, and it's in employment at the moment like a medical doctor, but he brought you from home, and you are under uh, two and a half years with no conditions, no recourse to public funds in your case, you will not have that opportunity to claim that money. You won't be able to claim uh, access to public funds. You will not be able to claim access to public funds. Basically, basically, unless both of you lose your job, that's when you will have access to public funds. There are conditions attached to this thing, but majorly, no recourse to public funds policy in light of coronavirus is actually assisting single parents. In light of coronavirus, but it will assist both parents, husband and wife, one with indefinite leave to remain, and the other one with two and a half years, or even if both of you are on two and a half years, providing, providing your, your income, you see that the income is not there anymore, that the company you are working for shuts down. They have shut down. Now, if the company you are working for, they have shut down, you're supposed to be clocking from the HM directly. You're supposed to be clocking. Your employer is supposed to be making way for you. Applying for you to get money from HM revenue because you're supposed to return back to employment after COVID. So it's not a complete shutdown. You were not made redundant. The company only, uh, the, the company only shut down for a while. Okay, I'm coming to I'm coming to I'm coming to answer you on that if I can manage to remember your question. But ma'am, why can't leave to remain get student loan from university despite having recourse? Yes. I, I'm, I'm coming back to that. How are you? <laughs> I'm coming back to that. Yeah. You 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 can, but there are some clauses to it. I think Diola Olaguju, because Adiola Olaguju might be in that arena. I think she's got some information for you to quickly give you. But I will check the information you are giving to, to that person so that you don't mislead. I'm the only legal advisor on this platform. I'm the only one entitled to. But if Diola Olaguju is giving information that he has, she has already obtained, in light of that answer, I want to see your question, uh, your answer and make sure it is correct. If it's not correct, I'm going to delete it off. Because I don't want to have a timeline that will be misleading public. You understand? I do not want to have a timeline that will mislead public. And that's that. So thank you. Thank you for that. Let me see your uh, right of Respond to that, please. I'll come and read your name later on. Um, let's, let's continue with the issue of people having access to public funds. Now, if both of you are not able to continue in employment, of course, you will have the opportunity to go and clock from the government. And if you want to have access to public funds, it is not automatic. Mm -hmm. It is not automatic. So let's get it right. If you are asking me too many questions at the same time, I may miss one for the other. So let's concentrate on what I'm saying. I think the majority want to hear this first before we look into other remnants one, other um, small, small ones. I think this is the major update for now for people. So let's concentrate on this. I don't like to waste time. Um, if you are going to use no recourse to public funds and you want to make application to the home office, they are different. Making application to the home office is different from making application to um hm revenue to clock back from the, if your company shuts down and they they shut down but you, you have not made redundant so let's get it right if the company shuts down it's it's presumably not the same english from redundancy 
So it's not the same. So if they shut down because of coronavirus, you are entitled to click, take money from the HM revenue. Whether that is the English, they call it in terminology of accountancy word. I don't know. But don't forget I'm married to an accountant. So I can easily get that terminology at the tip of my finger like this. So I won't use that terminology now until I check with him. And he told me that that's the terminology that they use for it. So let's get the layman English for that purposes for now. Let's use the layman's English. So you can claim back from the HM revenue, but your company is the one that's supposed to make that claim for you automatic. And you have to, um, when they're making that claim for you, because you are not self-assessment, you are not self-employed. So the company will put it in place and you will get 80% of your salary from HM revenue. And I think that is a clap for the government in the first instance, because half bread is better than nothing. And this is more than half bread. So I think we should kudos government. We should clap for the HM revenue and the UK government in terms of giving 80% of your salary back to you while your company has closed down, they are not operating. So you have to make sure that your company has closed down, they are not operating during this period. If they are operating, then they have to, they have obligation to pay your salary without any problem. It's a different uh, set game. If you are claiming no recourse to public funds, it's not the same with HM revenue, taking money back from the company because it's shut down, because your company closed down. So the government is assisting people on 80% of their salary. That is a different matter. Having access to public funds, having access to public funds, it's something that we need to talk about separately. Now, if you have a biometric card, which I don't think I have access to one or two of it, I think they are in my lock in the office because I'm working from home, in, you know, but I possibly have some there. You know, that biometric card, at the back of it, we say no access to public funds. If it does say no access to public fund, the next thing you want to do is ask the UK government, which is the Home Office Department, to remove the conditions. You want them to remove that condition. But there are conditions attached to that condition for them to remove it. So if you are going to ask them to remove it, you must be able to open yourself up to the government, to the Home Office. If you're not able to open yourself financially to the Home Office, you're not going to succeed. Because if you have five bank accounts and you think you want to play a smart game by providing one bank account to the home office, go and ask people that I've been working for. Go and ask people that I have done it for in the past. Before they open their eyes, the home office will download me other five bank accounts and say, listen, Mrs. Olagbaye, your client has this bank account. Your client only disclosed one bank account to you. Can we have the account and the balance in the account, in the rest of them? Then the client will be shocked. How do they know? It took me ages to know how they find out. But they find out through Equifast now. So I know where they got your information from. They call, they go into your record through Equifast and they will access it and get the statement. They might not see the balance. You understand? They might not be able to see the balance or they can even see the balance or not get it right. But at least what they wanted to find out is that you have other bank accounts and you are not upright. You are lying. You are not being straightforward. So if you want to take advantage of having access to recourse to public funds, having access to public funds, because once they lift it up, yeah, it will enable you to go and apply for job seeking employment, have access to go and queue for the housing, have access to go and do this, take things from the government for free. So it's not the same thing with the other one. So if you're going to have access to public funds, whoever goes to equity must do what? He must come with clean hands. So if you want to come to the home office to let them check you on financial situation, you must come with an open bank account, account, not one account. So if you have more than one bank account, it basically means that you have to download all the accounts you have in the UK. They don't have access to your American account or to your Nigerian account. They haven't got that power. But they have access to all the bank accounts you have in the United Kingdom. So which basically means that don't even make mistake. Don't even make mistake to go and make application to the home office for to have access to public funds while you have almost 6,000, 7,000 in the bank account sitting somewhere. That's one mistake. Another second mistake is when you collected this money that you, you, you call uh, contribution money, you do it together, about 10 of you, you are possibly putting money together, 500 pounds, 300 pounds, which, which is very common among you guys, you know, in the UK. You do that contribution money. And if you are the one that is collecting the money and you are the chief caretaker of taking that money and putting it in the bank account, and then at the end of the 
tenure of each person, you now transfer the money to the person that is that the turn of the person. You give the money to the person. If it's ten of you, basically you give five hundred. Five hundred is five thousand pounds for ten people. You are in trouble because home office will not want to hear your story. You already have ten thousand, five thousand pounds, so you have money to fund you in the meantime. So home office is not going to remove that public uh, conditions at the back of your card. So if you are doing award your contributions money, get that in the mind. The home office will not take it up for you. You will struggle before they will even listen to your stories. You understand? So in the past, those those that I have successfully removed their award, uh, remove their conditions for them. You know, I, I will remove it. But before I remove it, yeah, make them remove it, I will have assessed you from day one myself. It's only one out of two, 300 that I will not be able to remove it. And that means they lied to me. That means they have not been, the person is not being honest. And that has happened. The person has money. And, he, and she was a prolific liar. She did not disclose the bank accounts to me. And I keep pressing her. I said, you have money in the account. Go, go and bring the six months. She refused and said, no, it's not account. I don't have it. I don't use it. So she decided not to tell me the truth. So we went ahead to the home office. And home office refused her. Home office told me behind the scene the reason why they refused her, apart from what they, what they put in the document. But I didn't tell her. But I just gave her what the home office gave and said, this is the reason why you didn't go through. I said to her, but I warned you. But that could be only one out of 1,000 cases in my hand. It doesn't come like that because I don't take no for an answer. So we need to assess you from day one and make sure that you are going to succeed before I can even take your work because I hate to receive no for an answer. I am not a candidate that gets no for an answer. When I want to set a target or set a mind on a job, I must succeed. When I'm setting my mind on a project, I must succeed on that project because I don't lay my hand on anything that will not be successful. It is against my destiny. So when I want to work for you, I have to make sure that you are going to succeed. You can call me an old style. I prefer it to be like that. That is the way the white men operate in the UK on English law. Make sure the case makes sense to you before you bring it to court arena to come and argue. So for the government to lift the condition before the NRPF condition can be lifted in the decision-making process and before they can be sympathetic and be expeditious on your application, you need to be able to structure yourself properly and provide documents because the Home Office have made a series of important concessions, including accepting of the first time that the legal challenge to the NRPF policy raises a lot of serious issue, which has now been looked into and they have now considered many people along the line. In their consideration to this effect, they have now bring out for you to be successful, there are certain things that you have to put in place, which is part of what I've just told you now. Don't come out and come and deceive them when you have five bank accounts, four bank accounts. And those three other four bank accounts or other four bank accounts, they have almost 3,000, 4,000, 2,000. They are your savings account. The government wants you to go and spend your savings account. So don't come to them for NRPF to be removed. They're not going to give it to you. They're not going to remove it. Because they know that as soon as they remove the NRPF, your, your, your wind is going to be wider and you will be able to fly like a bird. You know, you'll be able to fly. So they will not be able to do that for you unless you disclose all the money, you disclose your balance in the bank account. If you're able to disclose the balance in the bank account, then you have home office at the back of your net. So you have home office straight away. What about a single mom that has just been, that just been granted two and a half years with no recourse to public funds that has a British child. Yeah, go ahead and ask them to remove it. In fact, in fact, in fact, I don't know whether the Home Office has, is talking to the internal trail, you know. I don't know whether they are actually discussing with the internal trail at the moment for them to, to remove it automatically when they are giving you that application and when they are granting it. But we keep an eye on the cards. Because the, uh, the TNT has not been supplying cards lately due to COVID, you know. They've not been supplying cards lately. So we have issues in that area as well. You know, we have issues in that area. So we're, we're, we're trying to resolve some... A lot of things needs to be resolved with the government department on homeland security. But it's not that being straightforward. 
you know um don't forget i am working from home so um i don't have receptionists i don't have admin staff anymore i don't have <laughs> uh, uh, case workers anymore i don't have anybody anymore so at the moment it's just only you for now and that's what destiny wants us to take on and that's how people have to uh, you know Re, re, replan themselves. Have, I'm, I'm trying to replan my brain, replan myself. So I'm getting used to it. In the last two months now, I've been working on my own consecutively. You know, so I like I, what I did now is that I staggered my work. So in those days that I used to do three, four applications on the same day, it's not possible today because of mm -hmm. I'm the only one doing it. So I have to stagger everything now, stagger work. You know, so um, thank you, Kola Wale Adurayo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kola Wale Odunayo. Thank you. I appreciate that statement. Thank you. You know, so um, as far as I'm concerned, the situation here still remain, uh, the situation on uh, uh, COVID still remain tense in the United Kingdom. So you have to be aware of the fact that you have to stay alert and take care of yourself. Um, in, in, in the meantime, the information you require in terms of accessing uh, public funds is out there in the public domain. And you can contact me if further information is needed. But don't necessarily think that after this video, I will have time to start taking questions for free. I'm not a free lawyer. I'm not a uh, law center lawyer or citizen advice bureau lawyer. I am a private lawyer. So I work for myself, my own entity, my own empire. So it's 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 not a different uh, it's not it's not the same ball game, you know. It is not the same game. It's a different one entirely. So I want to encourage you, if you're coming to me, you come with a mindset that you are coming to deal with an international lawyer who knows her stuff. So you should prepare your mind things to ask me, and you should prepare your mind about consultation, you know. Um, a lot of questions have been asked on that thing, but they are far. But I think somebody has helped me to answer you. Uh, God bless that lady or that man, whoever. You know, I think they, they should be aware of things that needs to be done. You know. You know, so um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, LTO, the scheme is called follow, follow scheme or follow, follow, eh? follow scheme. I've heard it from my husband. He said, fall on, fall on scheme. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to you, but I listen to you now because he just pronounced it from his uh, working corner there as well. He just pronounced it now that it's fall on. So that's it. So it's like a follow on. Thank you. He said it's like a follow on, fall on. I told you it's an accountant terminology. So I'm happy to have him on, on my belt. So before you get me messed up on accounting area, I ask question from him. <laughs> but that's what I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, in my domain. If you are affected by no recourse to public funds, which is NRPF, you can make an application to remove the restriction. So you contact me, Tukumbo Lagbaye. If you are affected, you know, if you are affected, if you are affected by NRPF, understand? If you are affected by NRPF, then you contact me. You contact me on the uh, you contact me on 0208 0208-309-8808. 0208-309-8808. God bless you too. God bless you. Arishi Kola with you. That's a powerful name. Arishi Kola. God bless all of you. Thank you. I think I've got to go now because time is not on my side to stay on online. I've got a lot of work on my on my side. Believe me. Trust me. Um, so there isn't time for me at all. There isn't time. I've got I've got loads of you know uh, paperwork, and trust me when I say paperwork, look. When I say paperwork, trust me, the government is not leaving me alone to work for to work on my client matters. As because of coronavirus, it doesn't affect me. I've got I've got work on my on my farm. Yes. So it's a matter of arranging things and sorting them out. 
one by one. And there are several emails that I also need to attend to from the home office asking me to scan client's documents set by set. So um, there isn't time to, to hang around. But if you are affected by the no recourse to, no recourse to public funds issue, NRPF, then you can easily make an application to remove the restriction through my office. Just contact me. I'm on 0208-309-8808. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Thank you, everybody. I've got to go now. People ask questions, but they have gone. I can't see those questions anymore, you know, because the system is fasting. A lot of people are commenting on it. So it's quite fast, which I appreciate. But I will not be able to respond to that. Um, contact me for further information because you, what you'll be getting from me might not be uh, enough to answer your problem on the public arena like this. So I think consultation is what you require to solve the problem. And my top fans, my top fans are already commenting and answering your question. So there's no need for me to talk about anything anymore. Once they, once they have that star top, uh, top fan, it means that they, we have been coming for a very long time now, and I recognize names as well on top of my head. So if you need uh, further information, use the phone number out there, 0208 309 8808 to contact LTO. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Stay alert, you know, and stay safe. Bye for now.